Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I would like to share with you this absolute heavy hitter from the Bow Hunter Box Club. And it's a heavy hitter because it is the heaviest box we've ever gotten so far, at least that I've gotten ever uh, from the Bow Hunter Box Club. It weighs over five pounds when I put it on my package scale. Lots of cool stuff in here. I can't wait to share it with you. If you want to also start your journey with the Bowhunter Box Club, use the promo code AJA. Follow the links in the description below. Save you a little bit of cash on your first box. You can join the family and get on on some awesome gear. First one off we have is an HME Hunting Made Easy Foldable Saw. Now, this is very similar to the folding saw we got a couple months ago, actually last fall, uh, from Easy Cut, but you can immediately see the size difference. I really like this. I don't hunt a whole lot of private land where I can trim shooting lanes. It's mostly predominantly public land here in Pennsylvania. We can't trim anything with that, but this is a much smaller knife, a lot easier to take in the woods. Just throw it in my pocket. It has a lanyard loop in the back end, but it's still just as durable, nice and locking on the back side, good textured handle. Lots of good grip, really aggressive teeth on the blade, and just a much smaller, I want to say it's probably only about a six inch blade, whereas this one, when it's fully open, it's like a two-handed saber. <laughs> this thing is huge. It's really nice and it's really convenient to get through thicker trees and um, some thicker branches, but it can be a little bit cumbersome. It doesn't really fit in a pocket very well, so I kind of have to store it in my bag and all that sort of stuff. This one can easily slip into the pocket of your work pants, your hunting pants, your blue jeans. You could tote it around the woods. I did uh, deliberately trim some branches around my yard here with it that I needed to for my spring green up, my spring cleanup, and it did the job just fine. Nothing wrong here. Got a nice uh, strong uh, zinc plated bolt right there to help keep a little bit of rust away. I'm really impressed with this so far. The whole HME line is just a really good product line. I've actually had never heard of them, believe it or not, until I joined the Bowhunter Box Club family and they've had a really good partnership with them, have given me a lot of good, very useful, you know, they're small, uh, flagging tape, uh, trail markers, you know, the reflective thumbtacks. A lot of smaller pieces have been put into the Bowhunter Box Club and they seem minute. But something like this, it only costs eight bucks, but something like this that I'm getting at a very good discounted price, it's worth it to me. Second thing we have here in the box are field body wipes from Mossy Oak, 30 of them in this pack. I'm not a big believer, and I've said this before on many other videos, I'm not a huge believer in terms of the whole human scent thing, the human odor thing, eliminating that, but I do strongly believe in taking wipes into the field for many different purposes, but predominantly for when you're in particularly in turkey season or in the early season here in Pennsylvania and many other states, it's quite warm. You sweat a lot getting to and from your stand. It's just nice to cool down, have a nice cool wipe, just nice and fresh, nice and clean. Or when you get back to the truck, if you're doing an all day hunt, you go into the morning, you sweat, you come in, you come out, you can clean yourself up or even better, you can throw a couple of these into a Ziploc bag, pull them out of the packet. Put that into your uh, your field dressing kit, and you have something wet if you don't have a water source around. You have something wet which to wipe your hands off when you're done field dressing an animal in the woods. So always a nice thing to have. I've traditionally used just baby wipes in the past, but this would be a little bit better. Help me with that odor because baby wipes are very, um, as you can imagine, aroma filled to help down with the smell there. But these might be a little bit better for me to take in the wood. Next down the list, we have 10 foot camel ratchet straps from Hawk. Hawk makes some great tree stands. These are hefty. I didn't pull them out of the package because I don't need them just yet, uh, but it's always nice to have tree stand specific ratchet straps. You can go and get ratchet straps from your local hardware store. It might be rated at three, four hundred pounds. That's all well and good, but I personally like to get as heavy duty ratchet strap as I can. I don't use ratchet straps because I don't have permanent tree stands and I like cinch straps better like from Lone Wolf or XOP. That's the stuff I use on my hang on stands. But if you use permanent stands or you have lock on stands you want to keep in an area for a longer amount of time, ratchet straps the way to go. Now sure, I can hear the people already, but you can just get them cheaper online. You can buy heavier duty. I understand that. But since this comes from a tree stand company, I trust these maybe a little bit more because they're putting their reputation of being a tree stand and tree stand safety company on the line. There's two of them. That's more than enough. 500 pounds rated a piece. That's definitely enough to keep my butt hanging out of a tree. So I'm very trustworthy of these. I'm glad they're in the box this month. So the last two pieces in the May Bowhunter box are what I think of when I think of the Bowhunter Box Club. Giving me things that I've never seen before, never tried before, maybe wanted to try, but I've never taken the leap off the ledge, if you will. The first thing is a sever broadhead. Now there's only one in here. I did open the box kind of played around with a little bit so I kind of knew what I was getting into. Kind of is like a mix between a Rage and a Schwacker and I'll pull up some uh, closer shots of it here in a second. I like the concept of the broadhead but I definitely don't like the idea of buying three if I'm not going to use it. 
So I like the idea of getting one, maybe try it out. If I like the concept, I can go ahead and purchase a full set to hunt with later. Sever is one of the newer broadhead companies on the market, or at least a revamped broadhead company that's on the market. Got to play with them around ATA, but it's cool to have them in the box. If you'd like to check them out further, I'll put links to all of these products in the description below. Now, I want to keep this video from being a broadhead review video because I could spend a lot of time talking about this broadhead. There's only one concept of this broadhead that I don't really like compared to something like a Schwacker or something that's like an over the top mechanical, like an NAP Spitfire, which has been around for decades is that the open part of the blades, the cutting edge of the blades, are still exposed even in practice mode. So if you're shooting this into a foam target, those open cutting edges are still exposed. You can actually run your finger down the ferrule and actually I cut a little bit of skin deliberately, cut a little bit of skin trying to see if I could uh, dull those blades up at all. And if I'm shooting it through foam, it's most likely going to dull that edge and I have to retouch it up. I'm not really wild about that, uh, I'm not wild about mechanical broadheads in general. If you followed the channel, you would know that. But I don't like the fact that these, uh, these edges are exposed. I mean, you have to practice with it anyhow. But the fact that those are exposed 24-7 makes them a little bit more dangerous while they're in the woods and also a little bit more likely to dull as you're using them in a practice situation. The second to last piece that gets slipped in here is actually not this package. It's this little guy right here. We have a piece of Mountain Ops Supercharged Energy and Focus Drink. Mix this in with water. Mountain Ops is not something that, well, I really get into. I'm not a big workout guy. I'm not a big, you know, let's go up and chase elk in the mountains kind of guy. But Mountain Ops is definitely making its headway. Uh, you see a lot of guys like Cam Haynes and Hush and all those channels. They're big Mountain Ops dudes, but they work out. This, that's their kind of thing. So this is Tiger's Blood. This makes one serving, eight to 12 ounces of water, stir or shake, take 30 minutes before workout or physical activity. So even though I'm not a workout guy or somebody who really gets into that side of bow hunting, this is an interesting piece to have in here. Maybe I end up liking it. Maybe I end up trying to work out a little bit more. And uh, I guess I'm drinking tiger's blood, right? So that gives me the eye of the tiger, right? That's just ridiculous. I don't know how I'm gonna edit that piece. So the big piece that's in here, the heaviest piece for sure, is a hub style multi-tray exclusive for ground blinds. A little bit unique. Big game tree stands, been around forever. I've hunted out of many of their tree stands in the past. They also make some really great ground blinds. The thing is, is that it's exclusively for hub style ground blinds. So I own a doghouse style ground blind, which folds in completely on itself. You know, it comes out into a big two person that it can fold down about the size of a big pizza, like an extra large pizza, a really big frisbee. You can't use this uh, ground, uh, ground blind uh, tray in those type. It has to have the hub, which pop in and out, like a double bowl or a big game that has the hub style to it. Pulls out and then it uh, becomes a tray that hangs off of the fiberglass rods next to the hub and you can set your drink, you can set calls, you can set a uh, pair of binoculars, you can set your range finder, that sort of stuff. Really neat idea because typically when you're in the ground blind, particularly those big ones, you have actually have a lot of space and if you got to try to fit you and a cameraman in there, which is becoming more and more popular these days, you're, you're really cramped for space in terms of floor space and definitely reaching around for things. You want to have easy access, so you either got to hang it off your chair, have it on your person, or in this case, you can have it on that hub, reach stuff, get stuff right off that hub, use it, put it back, and you're good to go. So I'm 99% a public land bow hunter. That's really what I do. Don't do a lot with ground blinds in general. I do know some guys that do a lot with ground blinds. This would be a unique thing uh, for them. For me, it's not really all that useful. I'm really a tree stand dweller. I don't do well in ground blinds. I like to move around a lot. I don't like to carry all that extra weight, particularly the hub style ground blinds really heavy. They're more of a permanent set or a couple days set, and, you know, set it there for a week and hunt out of it once or twice. This is still a unique thing. I never heard of this thing before until I'd seen it in the Bowhunter Box Club box. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about the Bowhunter Box Club family or anything else pertaining to archery and archery hunting, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, leave a comment here on YouTube. My email is even down there if you want a more personal connection. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery. Archery hunting, if you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time. All right, so I actually have to try this stuff out. Ooh, it's purple. Thought it'd be red, but I guess tiger's blood is purple. La -de, de de la de da. Can't figure out what that smells like.
What's the flavoring in here? Things I can't pronounce, natural flavor, beet juice. I knew it tasted like beet. It's got some citric acid in there, so it's got a little bit of a, um, almost a lemon feel on the back end. It's actually not too bad, that's actually really good. I'm pretty picky about my flavored water. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'm gonna chug that and uh, go mow the lawn.